All right, I told you this was gonna be good and it is so good. We're just getting into the really good part. So we're on part two of Proverbs 31, 31 out of the Tree of Life version. And we're diving into the second part. Let her deeds be her praise at the gates. So remember let, the definition that God had a zero in on through the guidance of his precious Holy Spirit is not doing anything to stop it from happening, to stop what from happening? Her deeds being her praise in the gates. So what do deeds mean? For the first time ever in my studies for the Virtuous Insights series, the Holy Spirit told me on the word deeds, don't look at the definitions. I looked at definitions first and thought, this is what we do, God. And he said, no, I need you to look at the synonyms for this word only. So the synonym he took me to first for the word deeds was truth. Truth. The synonym, there were two synonyms for truth that he guided my attention to. Authenticity and legitimacy. Authenticity and legitimacy. And these are going to be powerful. So we're going to come back so that we can take time to break that down. So don't stop anything from allowing it to happen. Don't stop her deeds from being her praise in the gates. So what does be mean? Two definitions God led me to. Exist and occur or take place. Exist means to live, breathe, or have life. Do you remember the definition of the word life? the ability to grow or reproduce. The ability to grow or reproduce means that you have life or that you exist. So let her deeds grow or reproduce something. Also, let's take into account the second definition, occur or take place, which means materialize or arise. Mm. Materialize or arise. So her deeds are going to grow and reproduce something. They're going to cause something to materialize or arise. What is that? Praise. Hallelujah. This is not a new word either in this study, is it? No, it's not. We found out that there were four definitions for the word praise that were incredibly significant. To remind you, here they are again. Number one, to say or write something good about, to express approval of. To say or write something good about, to express approval of. Number two, to express thanks or love to, to express thanks or love to. Number three, commendation, commendation. Number four, value. So her deeds are going to grow and reproduce, cause to materialize, someone to say something good about her, to express approval of her, someone to express thanks or love to her, someone is going to commend her, someone is going to value her. Okay, well, who's going to do this and where are they going to do it? At the gates. At the gates. That's where it's going to happen. And the Greek Hebrew dictionary by Strong has got four definitions that are gonna to reveal to us who's gonna do it and where they're gonna do it. It's gonna blow your mind, ladies. Whew, it's gonna blow your mind. God is awesome. All right, so the first definition that Strong's Greek and Hebrew Dictionary gave me for gates was gate of entrance. The Lord spoke very specifically to me about this. And he said, it's going to open doors for her, gain entrance, for her. It's going to open doors for her or gain entrance for her in places that have before been closed off to her. Now that's a reason to rejoice right there, sister. But we're going to verse number two. The second definition from the Strong's Greek and Hebrew Dictionary for the word gates is gate of space inside gate of space inside gate, i.e. marketplace, public meeting place, city, or town. What does that mean? That means where she dwells and among those she knows. So her uh, deeds are going to 
cause to materialize, cause to arise. They're going to grow and reproduce open doors for her. They're going to gain her entry to places. And then some of those places are going to be where she dwells. Among those, she knows. So the where and the who are going to be among those that she knows where she lives. Wow. Wow. So get ready for that, sister, if it hasn't happened yet, because it's going to happen. We know that the word of God says that all of God's promises are amen, which means so be it. And yes, which means it's going to happen for us when we accept Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The third definition from the Strong's Greek Hebrew Dictionary for the word gates <laughs> Whew, are of palace, mm -hmm. royal castle, yes, temple, court of tabernacle. That's right. Among dignitaries, she's going to be praised. Among court officials, she's going to be praised. Among royalty, hallelujah, she's going to be praised. She's going to be caused by her deeds to be honored among high men and women. Yes, that's right. It's going to happen there. And those people are going to cause her to be spoken highly of, right? Expressing approval of. So when you look around and you go, God, my God, these people are PhDs. What am I doing here? Remember that Proverbs 31, 31 already spoke of where you were going to be. And that's why you're seated there. Because your praise was going to happen in these places. And then number four, wow, heaven. Heaven will honor her and take notice of her deeds, express approval and thanks about her, commend her, value her express their love to her. It's going to happen in heaven. So let's look at <laughs> what the real breakdown is with these deeds, right? Because these deeds are powerful. These deeds are powerful enough to reproduce, to cause to materialize or arise all of this saying and writing good things and expressing approval of, expressing thanks and love, expressing commendation, expressing value of this virtuous woman from where she lives and amongst those she knows all the way up to dignitaries and even past those dignitaries and royalty to heaven itself. So what is the significance of those deeds? Well, have you ever heard, back to authenticity and legitimacy, have you ever heard of an illegitimate child. Sure you have, we all have. And that illegitimate child is, is termed that because they were born, created outside of the bonds of holy matrimony, outside of holy wedlock. That is what causes them not to be legitimate, but to be illegitimate or not legitimate. So what is any marriage higher than the marriage of that of God's son, Jesus Christ, to his church? Who is his church? The people who accept Jesus Christ. They become part of the body or the church of Christ. Wow. So that marriage causes legitimacy. Romans 7, 4 in the easy to read version says it this way. In the same way, my brothers and sisters, your old selves died and you became free from the law through the body of Christ, through the church. Now you belong to someone else. You belong to the one who was raised from death. We belong to Christ so that we can be used in service to God. Wow. So we become his legitimate bride through being married to Jesus Christ. So once we become married to Jesus Christ, something happens. 
a vision develops in us that did not previously exist. And we are then able to see ourselves through the vision that God has for us. Let's find out what his vision is. And we're going to talk about it through a particular version of the word of God. It's called the TPT, which means the Passion Translation. Wow. Glory to God. So Ephesians 2.10 in the Passion Translation says it this way. We have become his poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us, for we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. The good works, deeds, avocation, are the very deeds of Jesus Christ himself. When Jesus walked the face of the earth, he went about leading others to his father so that he could be perfectly manifested, his character in them. When we take up that avocation, when we become joined to him, not only do we become his legitimate bride, but we also become the legitimate children of God. And through that authenticity, that legitimacy, <laughs> nothing will be able to stop us from having that relationship, that authenticity, that legitimacy grow and reproduce, material, cause to materialize and arise, us being spoken well of approved of, commended, valued where we are in higher places on this earth and all the way to the gates of heaven. Wow. Look at God. How amazing is that, right? Oh, my Lord. Dear sister, if it has not been made apparent to you as you have studied with us, Please let me be clear that what I just described is you as long as you have accepted Jesus as your personal savior. Oh, but dear sister, if you have not, it's all right because I can help you do that right now. And I encourage you, if you have not already done so, to stop right now, lift your eyes toward heaven and pray this prayer. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, I accept Jesus as your son and as my savior. Lord, please forgive me for any sins that I have committed. And I ask right now for your son to come into my life as my savior and my Lord. I accept his sacrifice on my behalf as my substitute. And I am thrilled and honored to take on his life, his perfection, and his approval from you. God, I thank you for receiving me. And I can't wait to see what you have in store for me. In Jesus' name, amen. It is that simple. If you have done that, sis, you are now that person that we just talked about in Proverbs 31, 31, that you will receive the fruit of your hands and your deeds will not be stopped or hindered from being, from growing, reproducing, causing to materialize and to arise the praise at the gates on every single level. Glory to God. Well, that concludes verse 31 of Proverbs 31, which concludes the actual acrostic poem. But please come back next week for the incredible wrap up of this series that Kim Bolden and I will be sharing with you. We'll be back next week with that wrap up of the Virtuous Insight Studies and to let you know what's next. So please don't miss it. This concludes our time with you today, but we just wanted to remind you, if you've not done so already, please subscribe to us here on Virtuous Woman ASAP here on YouTube so that you will not miss anything that God has to share through us with you. Be blessed.